looking to study international business management as a degree? What did I get out of it and where did I end up after university? Well, let's take a look at it. Just before we go on, a quick look at my recent trip to Harrods in London. Enjoy. This knife has a straight edge on it, so it's very easy. And maybe in our world here, there lives a happy little milk. So maybe you've just left college and you're looking to do a degree in international business management. Now that is the exact same degree that I done and I graduated in 2014. Six years on, I'm here, I've achieved a lot. So let's take a look at whether it was worth it, what I learned and is it applicable in the real world? I done a three year international business management degree at the University of Wolverhampton. Now, the University of Wolverhampton isn't a specialist business university whatsoever, but it was the only one that I could find that was local to me and one that I wouldn't have to travel too far to. The entire degree was a mix between coursework and exams. Now, if I were to divide that into percentages, I would say 90% of the time it was coursework that you have to take home and complete and then hand it in, and then 10% of the time it was examinations. The content of the degree itself is pretty broad, to be honest. You do cover several topics over three years and you'll get a kind of overview of each module. Now, we studied everything from finance to marketing to supply chain management to corporate social responsibility, which was probably one of my favorites. Each module took around three months to complete. So we would have, I think to my memory, around nine modules in a year. And then after that, there would be obviously the break over the summer, then you'd come back, do it all over again. Then the third year, you do it all over again, plus your dissertation, which is the big one. As I said before, each module is pretty much just a brief overview. They don't really go in depth into the mechanics and the workings of that particular module as they only tend to have between two and three months to teach you. Then you go on to the next module, then you have two to three months within that module, then you go on to the next one. So it isn't a long period of time to really specialize in anything. Instead, what they do, it's labeled international business management and they'll give you a broad overview of what that entails. That's what I found to be one of the disadvantages, but I will explain that a bit later on. The only part of the degree that I felt I thoroughly enjoyed was the dissertation part. As I feel out of all of the exams and all of the pieces of coursework, the dissertation is where you can really kind of show your creativity. You can, you can conduct your own research and come to your own conclusion. You know, you can present your findings. I feel that really gets the brain ticking. So that was definitely one of the favorite parts of the entire degree. Now, typically up and down the UK, it is a three to four year course. Now it's three years if you don't wish to take a working gap year or it's four years if you do wish to take a working gap year. So a lot of my friends that I studied with through year one and year two, they went away, some to Finland and some to China and some to America to go and study and learn and then they come back and complete the final year. Of course, you finish uni a year late, but at the end of the four year period, you do also have a year's experience under your belt, which is definitely worth it. I personally didn't do it, but I do highly recommend for you to do it. It is a bit scary if you haven't lived out before. Now, I don't want to go into the whole workings of the course too much as you know, you can read that in the prospectus or the course guide. What I want to talk about is what did I take away from the international business management degree and what did some of my peers end up doing at the end of it when they came out of uni and they graduated? I feel it's such a profound question. For me, it's not a black and white answer. What did you take away from university? Um, I think it really depends upon one's aims. Now, let me give you an example. If you are truly passionate about something and you're willing to study it and you have the end goal, then you're probably going to pay more attention. You're probably going to be more focused and you're probably going to retain more information. For me, it was the opposite. Now, before I started uni, I didn't really know where I wanted to be. I knew I wanted to be in business, but that's very broad. What part of business do you want to be in? What role do you want to be doing? Which company would you like to work for 
you know there's so many different angles to come at so personally I didn't retain too much information throughout university as my heart wasn't in it. I feel that there is a lot taught within that three to four year degree. You know, as I said before, you do cover several topics and you know, you do walk away with quite an understanding of those topics. Nevertheless, what I found personally is when you leave university and you get into the real world, you get into a career, you realize that everything that you were taught, it's not really applicable as it was all theory. Somebody once said something to me and it's always stuck to me. They said, Aaron, don't you find it strange that the person at the front of the classroom that's teaching about business or teaching about finance or teaching about how to you know, successfully run a business, they seldom have run a business themselves. Now that got me thinking and that's what was happening in university. We had all these lecturers at the front of the classroom preaching all this theory, but when you actually check their background, they haven't done any of these things. Yes, they may have graduated within that field, but graduation and theory versus practicality, you know, they're two very different things. And that's the biggest point for me. You know, when I first got into my career straight after graduating, I realized that I had to learn everything from scratch once again. It was like building everything back up. As I said, everything was just theory, but in the real world, it was completely different. Now, a joke that I like to tell, one of the only things that I took away from university that I have found is practiced within businesses is the SWOT analysis. So the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threat analysis. That is used quite a bit. And that's truly the only thing that I felt that was taught that I've really applied in real life. When people ask me for advice on whether they should go to uni or whatever they should study, what I say to them is this. For me, it was a game of memorization versus a game of creativity. Now, what I mean by that is, I don't feel university encourages creative thinking. I feel like it's more of a textbook approach. Now, people that have done really well in the exams and coursework, it was just purely about how much information they could retain from the lectures. That's all it was about. Somebody was teaching you something and you had to go away and apply that. Now, going back a few minutes, what I said about the dissertation, that was probably one of the best parts of the degree for me. Why? Because they gave you a blank canvas. It was a blank canvas for you to choose any topic and present your findings and come to a conclusion. That's what I felt made the difference and that's what the real life scenario is all about. That is what careers are all about. I always take the example uh, of a few friends of mine that I still keep in touch with after university six years on. These guys done well in their exams and courses because they had a very good memory. They could retain more information than the average person. And that's all it was about. But when it came to the dissertation, I actually excelled because again, I'm a very creative person and I love kind of researching and presenting my own findings in general anyway. Let's look at a real life example. Now in the real world, you're presented with unique obstacles left, right and center, especially in your career. So let me give you an example. When I graduated from university, University, I got into a sales job for an IT company and I was doing a lot of selling I was talking to 110 people a day uh, unique people that had different characters and personalities that requires creativity there is no textbook that can teach you how to deal with a hundred different characters and personalities and habits and you know so on and so forth in a day there is no textbook that can do that that required creativity and quick thinking, quick thinking, quick thinking. There was no textbook to draw from. And that's what I feel universities should be encouraging is quick thinking, creativity, and learning how to think on your feet. So let's look at what myself and a lot of my peers done after graduating from university. Unfortunately, most of us landed in sales jobs. Now there was a bit of a pause there because honestly doing three to four years of an international business management degree, you have huge hopes for being the next Bill Gates or Steve Jobs. But we found ourselves on the phones, ringing prospects to sell to them. Now some people say, hey, well, it's a stepping stone, right? But my point is we went to university to get a head start. We shouldn't have to be sat in a cubicle selling away to people. That doesn't require a university degree whatsoever, but that's what we found we ended up in. And again, this is a real world example of myself and my peers. So I'm basing this off my personal experience, but also the experiences of other people that I know of.
Nevertheless, I quit my job after a year of being in there and I went away and set up my digital marketing agency, which went on to become very successful. Then I also set up a investments related company too. A little tip for you, everything I learned to start these companies, I started on YouTube. I started watching the videos on YouTube and it just grew from there. So there's absolutely no excuse why you can't do the same too. So what are my final thoughts for you? Please, if you are a potential international business management degree student, do not let this video put you off, believe me. Whether international business management is a worthwhile subject or not for you, it's completely relative. It may work better for you as your vision may be clear, clearer from day one than mine was. Again, like I said before, I didn't really know what I wanted in the end, so how can I be passionate about something along the way? One of the best pieces of advice that somebody gave to me after university was this, reverse engineer what you want. Work back from what you want and then figure out the steps along the way and that will give you the answer as to whether university is the route or not. So maybe you feel you love business, right? But does that mean you want to own your own business or do you want to work inside of a great company with great benefits? and a great pension even. What I personally believed before university was, hey, I love business, so that means I should do a business degree. But in the end, what it really meant was, I love being my own boss, I love being the CEO, and that's truly what I wanted to do. So I didn't really have to go to university for three years, I didn't have to waste tens of thousands of pounds in studying how to run my own business. A degree is a great way to get your foot into the door, believe me. It is a great way because it leaves a very good impression on your potential employer. Now, when you go to job interviews, they will ask whether you have a degree or not. And if you do have one, it just makes you slightly more desirable than somebody that doesn't have one. For somebody that doesn't have a degree, they'll have to make up for it with experience and job history. Something to note also is a trend that we're seeing in the marketplace. Now the trend is that huge companies such as Apple, Ernest & Young and Google are starting to hire candidates that have no degrees because they feel it doesn't reflect a candidate's true ability. Now that is something to note. So some final thoughts for you. Please, as I said, this is just my experience. This is the experience of others that I know too. Um, that is what we felt a degree does. It can be good, it maybe can't be good, it just depends what you want out of it and where you want to go. So as I said, the biggest tip for this video is reverse engineer and that will reveal the answers to you. Guys, make sure you go check out my other videos too. If you found some value from this, give me a like, give me a comment, um, or maybe just drop your kind of international business management degree related questions or experiences. It would be a great way to discuss for us. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.